Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at OSX Mountain Lion. All right, so to start off, I want to get two things out of the way really quick. First, I'm going to refer to OS X in this video as OS X because they're both the same exact thing, they mean the same thing, and OS X stands for OS X because X is the Roman numeral for 10. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Also, I just wanted to say that I'm going to be showing you guys OS X Mountain Lion inside of a virtual machine. And that's because OS X Mountain Lion breaks the compatibility for certain applications. And what I mean by that is certain applications will not work on OS X Mountain Lion yet. And one of those applications is ScreenFlow, which is what I actually use to record the screen for my screen capture videos. So I can't natively boot into OS X Mountain Lion. So what I had to do is actually get a virtual machine set up with OS 10.8 or Mountain Lion. And I'm just using ScreenFlow on my host operating system to record the virtual machine. And unfortunately, you cannot change the resolution of OS X Mountain Lion yet in the first developer preview for some unknown reason when it's inside of a virtual machine. So it might look a little odd because I have to zoom in. There will be a little bit of extra blank spaces on the sides. But without any further ado, we're going to get into this and we're going to cover all of the key features of OS X Mountain Lion in the order that Apple has them on their website. So first things first, we're going to be taking a quick look at iCloud. Now Mountain Lion brings a couple of additional iCloud features to OS X. And a few of those things would include calendar and reminders, a notes application, so an option to sync all of your notes via iCloud on your Mac. So I'm just going to enable that right now so that I can demonstrate that in a second. And you also have accounts, which is new. And there are a couple of other things that are new that you can't really see within the settings for iCloud. You actually have to dig into it a little bit deeper. And there's also more integration for specific third-party applications. And next, we're going to be taking a look at the Messages application. For those of you that don't know, Messages is a new cross-platform messaging application that kind of combines OSX iChat with iMessages, and it's the replacement for iChat. So essentially, it has iChat built into it, and you can also send messages messages to iOS, iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch users, as well as sending messages to Mac users, and even instant messaging other iChat users. And you can use AIM or a couple of other different instant messaging services with messages, just like you could with iChat. So to start off, I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of receiving a text message or iMessage through this messages application on the Mac. So I'm actually on my iPhone right now, and I'm just going to send a quick test text message through my iPhone. As you can see, it comes up over here on the side. I have a notification right here, and I have a notification in Notification Center, which I'll get into a little bit later, but I just want to show you that the notification system does work in OS X Mountain Lion. So let's come back over here and let's look at this chat. Now basically it looks like just a regular iMessage chat. However, as you can see, the bubbles are different colors and you can get into that and you can kind of customize that. However, I don't wanna to get too in depth and I don't wanna just focus on messages because I could make an entire video on messages alone. All right, so now messages actually quit and I had to clear the chat transcript and reopen it. So I sent myself another message and over on the left hand side as received message, it came through as three messages for some reason, but now I'm just going to show you guys that you can send media over messages as well. So let's bring up Safari here and let's go to a website. And I'm going to grab the first image I see here and that is a Concept iPad 3. So let's go ahead and just drag it to the desktop and once it's on the desktop, let's just drag it into messages. And as you can see, you can drag it anywhere into your current chat and it will place it in as multimedia and then you can send it through. Now you can also send different audio files and video clips. However, they can't exceed the limit. And the limit isn't specifically stated, but you can send some pretty decent sized video clips through. Also, you can send different things like applications through. However, if you're on an iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch, you can see those, you just cannot open them. So that's more for Mac to Mac communication. Now, as I mentioned before, there is an iChat portion that's built into messages here. And let's go ahead and demonstrate that now. So what you can do is go to the messages section up here go to preferences, and then inside of preferences, you can add different accounts. So I have all of my accounts over here on the left-hand side, and my two active accounts include my iMessage account and my AIM account. Now, once you have both of those added, if you wanna see your iChat buddies, 
you can simply go to window at the top and iChat buddies. All right, so let's move on now and let's close out of messages and we will go into reminders. So I just added a simple reminder here on my iPhone and it popped up because I have sync reminders checked in my iCloud settings and you can edit your reminders and you can grab more information on your reminders here and you can set when you want it to remind you what list you want it to be added on the priority of it and you can even add specific notes to it and once you have that added you can just hit done and it will save that so you can see it across all your devices if you have it enabled with iCloud so let's just hit done to that and let's go ahead and add a new reminder to add a new reminder all you have to do is click on the next line and then you can type in whatever you want so let's just say make a video and once you've added it, you can add more information to it, just like I stated before. And essentially, it's just a really nice application. I mean, it looks gorgeous, and it's very reminiscent of its iOS counterpart. So let's look at it here on the left-hand side. It's divided into two sections. The first section is your specific list over here, and we can collapse it so you just see the list, or we can bring it up so you can also see a list of your different lists over here on the left-hand side. And to the right of that collapse button, we have a button that brings up a little calendar so we can add different reminders for different days and it shows you how many reminders are completed and it will also show you which reminders you have left to do so let's go ahead and just exit out of this go to the current day and we will hit plus and what you can do is create a new list so let's say video list and then you can add different reminders there like I said you can collapse it back and you can switch out to a different list if you want to, and you can collapse the calendar too if you don't wanna see the calendar. So it's basically just reminders on OS X. It's extremely amazing and it just works like how you'd think it would work. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Notes, which is also a new addition with Mountain Lion. All right, so Notes, as you can see, I don't have anything in it yet. However, Notes should start popping up because I did just enable it, because I did just enable it inside of iCloud. So it does take a second, however, all of your Notes will sync and as you can see it really does look like the notes application for the iPad so let's go ahead and just double click on this one and when you do that it brings up the standalone note and what you can do from there is expand the note which is what I just did there and you can add more information to that note so let's just say video and that will add that portion to the note and it will sync it across all of your devices through iCloud. And what you can do is delete the note if you want, and you can even share it through messages or email. So let's go ahead and just close out of this. And what you can also do is click this button and see where your notes are coming from. So my notes are coming from just my regular notes on iCloud. But aside from that, you can create new notes simply by hitting the plus button. And like I said, I'm not going to go too into depth on each application because I could probably make a video for each one. And let's go ahead and move on from the notes application now. All right, so now we're going to be taking a look at Notification Center. And as you'll notice up here on the right-hand side of my top toolbar, I have a little circle with a dot in the middle of it, and that's actually Notification Center. I have no new notifications now, but when certain things happen like calendar events or reminders go off, or when you receive a message through iMessage, or if you get some type of a notification from a different application, then they will appear here. I'm just going to demonstrate a simple notification just me sending myself a message through iMessage from my iPhone. So let's just send a message saying, hey, and it will roll up here at the top. As you can see, it says, hey, who it's from, and it gives a little picture of what type of application it came from. And in this case, it did come from messages, and then it just slid off of the screen there to the right-hand side, and to access it, all you have to do is bring up Notification Center. It tells you how long ago it was sent, and again, it just tells you who it's from and the message. And I'm sure in the final release, when you click on it, it will bring up that notification. So that's all I'm really going to get into with Notification Center right now. It's pretty self-explanatory, and it just works, and it looks great. I mean, the UI is amazing. And I'm going to send myself another notification just so you guys can see the interface again. So I have a notification. It didn't pop up for some reason, but let's bring it up. And as you can see, it lists the notification right here, and you can click the X to dismiss all of your notifications. And now we have no new notifications. So moving on, let's go ahead and take a look at share sheets now. And in order to do that, I'm going to bring up my website with Safari here. You will notice that Safari is slightly different, and I'll talk about that right after I talk about share sheets. But to the left of the URL bar up here, you have this little share icon that you frequently see inside of iOS. So let's just go ahead and hit it, and you get the option to add it to your reading list, add it to bookmarks, 
email the page, send the page through the message app, or send it via Twitter. So I'm going to send it through Twitter and it will start to compose a tweet with the URL right here and it just shows a brief overview of the page. So I'm just gonna say OSX mountain lion video tweet test. So let's go ahead and send that out. Let's bring up Twitter here on my host operating system and as you can see, it says OSX mountain lion video tweet test and it gives a link to the page. In this case, it was just my website. Now share sheets is pretty self-explanatory. That's basically all it does. It works really well, it has a very nice interface for Twitter, and it also works with Photo Booth if you take pictures. However, because this is a virtual operating system, it does not detect a camera, and I don't have it set to share it, so it just says there's no connected camera, and I can't take a picture to actually show you guys sharing within Photo Booth. So now let's take a look at the changes inside of Safari. They're barely noticeable, it just looks cleaner overall, and right here, you just have one URL bar. It isn't divided, so you do not have a specific search engine bar anymore to the right-hand side of the URL bar, you just have one unified bar, and you can search the web inside of it as well. As you can see, it says search Google or enter an address. So I'm just going to type in best tech info. And as you can see, it says Google search to the right of best tech info. And if I actually add the .com, it will bring up the tagline for the website and it will just go to the website. But what we're going to do is just Google search it. As you can see, it just searches through Google just like how you'd expect. And you can go to that website once you've searched for it and reader is different as well so reader now is just to the right of it it's a bigger button and it's blue now however other than that it's exactly the same as reader online it just works how you'd expect it to work and it just looks great on mountain lion with the new version of safari and obviously you do have the addition of share sheets as well Next up, we have Game Center, which doesn't work right now. It's strictly in sandbox mode, and I'm not actually going to enter anything in because it doesn't work and it just detects my old information when I first signed up for Game Center ages ago. So I'm not going to sign in right now, but like I said, you can get a feel for the user interface here. Other than that, everything's in sandbox and it doesn't really work. You have the ability to search for friends up here. You can view yourself, your friends, your games, and your requests, and you can also go backwards or forwards depending on where you're navigating from. All right, so now let's close out of this. And the next thing up is AirPlay mirroring. Unfortunately, like I said, because this is a virtual operating system, it doesn't detect the displays correctly, so it can't really do AirPlay mirroring. But normally when you go inside of the display setting, you get an option right here to pick your AirPlay mirroring receiver, which would obviously be an Apple TV, and you just select it and it would mirror exactly what you see on your computer to your Apple TV and it works with applications, with videos, and basically just everything and sound is also delivered through it over Wi-Fi. So it simply works and if you'll notice right here, I have a little display icon and you can set it right here inside of the display options and that's a way to quickly access your AirPlay mirroring devices. Unfortunately, like I said, because this is a virtual machine, it doesn't work properly so it isn't detecting my Apple TV right now. And finally, I just wanted to take a quick look at Gatekeeper, which is OSX Mountain Lion's new and somewhat controversial way to protect you against malicious files. Now it can be found in the security and privacy settings portion of system preferences, and it's not very apparent. It's just these three bottom options. It says allow applications downloaded from Mac App Store is the first option, Mac App Store and identified developers is the second option, and anywhere is the third option. So let me just explain these a little better. So if you have Mac App Store checked, it will only allow you to download and install applications from the Mac App Store. Whereas if you have Mac App Store and identified developers checked, you will be able to install applications from the Mac App Store as well as from identified developers with certified applications that are guaranteed to be safe. And your final option is anywhere. However, if you select either of these top two, you can override that decision simply by control clicking. So no matter what, you'll always be able to install what you want. It's just as a precaution cautionary measure to make sure you don't accidentally download something, open it, and install it thinking it's something else. Because it's actually a common misconception that Macs do not get viruses, they actually can get a virus. However, the chances are very slim. In order to actually get a virus on a Mac, as of now, you would have to download a malicious application, open it, input your password, 
finish installing it, and then it can possibly gain control. So it's extremely hard to get a virus on your Mac if you actually know what you're doing. But personally, I think this is actually a great addition to OS X, and I think it will certainly help keep a lot of people safe. And just remember that you can override your decision whenever you want. So I hope you guys liked this video. It's just been a look at OS X Mountain Lion Developer Preview 1 and an overview for all of the key features inside of OS X Mountain Lion. And it's definitely possible that they could add new features to future developer previews and to the actual final version of OS X Mountain Lion. So I hope you guys liked this video. Please remember to rate it up if you did. Leave any comments down below in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already and stay tuned for more coverage on Mountain Lion and its exciting new features. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.